Hi from my platform Linda's TV show. If it is your first time, you are welcome. Please, after watching this video, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. It is very, very important because it will enable you to know when I upload a new video. Here we upload videos on daily basis as it is happening. We are bringing it live and direct, undirected to you. After watching, you are free to criticize. You are free to say your opinion, but let us say it constructively myself linda will be standing here watching this video together with you from the beginning to the end then we'll go to the comment section i appreciate you all my loving subscribers followers those who comment and share this video as do you believe that there is a cause for concern here in terms of whether or not nigerians should trust the results that are coming out Absolutely. There's a, there's a serious cause for concern and because this is one election where Nigerians had high expectations, not because they didn't believe that their vote was going to count, but because you had institutions like INEC, like the security agencies that gave assurances they were fully prepared for the elections. This is one election where for the first time since 1999, Nigeria produced its ballot papers and result sheets in country, and it wasn't produced outside the country. And so we expected that the logistical hiccups that we experienced shouldn't have been the case. But it's quite disappointing that since 1999 till date, we're still grappling with the issues of logistical challenges. Um, this is one election that was built around electoral technology. Mm -hmm. And if there's one story out of this election, it's how powerful technology can break and damage the trust that citizens have on electoral outcomes. The delay in the transmission of election results on the INEC election results viewing portal, a very noble um, technological tool introduced by INEC was disappointing and it indeed cast doubt on the integrity of the process and i i say this quite frankly yeah that that this particular election has unraveled the need for deeper reflection about the role of our institutions and how we need to ensure that elections deliver integrity to the nigerian people i mean it's remarkable isn't it because INEC had one job they literally had one thing to get right and that is essentially delivering on what they'd promised. That is this idea, as you point out, of uploading all of the election results the minute they came in onto a viewing portal online for all Nigerians to see, that there would be transparency this time around. They promised the Nigerian people that. And the one thing they had to do in order to ensure that people trusted these elections, they didn't deliver. All of a sudden, lots of excuses trickled in about uh, you know, the portal failing to work and issues with uh, internet, that sort of thing. Um, when you think about the other issues surrounding this election, it's not just about INEC and the transparency of those results. There are other factors as well. I mean, you just saw one of our reporters there talking about the level of violence at certain polling stations around the country. Also, election workers saying that they have been uh, threatened, you know, in terms of losing their life if they didn't change or manipulate certain results. Just explain to us more broadly, beyond the INEC issue, what happened over the weekend? Well, from a Yaga Africa's perspective, we did confirm about 131 critical incidents. And these incidents relate to the management of the process, but also violence. You know, Zane, this afternoon I spoke to one of the officials and he narrated horrific experiences that he went through in the hands of thugs. Um, and it was just unacceptable. We've also seen cases where people have lost their lives. In one of the coalition center in one of the states, um, our, our coalition center observer was evicted you know, from the coalition center because the thugs invaded the centers. And in one particular case, one person was shot, and was confirmed dead, um, in the hospital. So you look at this pocket of violence and it just says three things. That first, the political class, particularly those who are running and seeking political power, are not prepared, are not committed to democratic principles. They all signed a peace accord to refrain from violence, but we, all we see is just observance of the peace accord in breach. 
The second critical issue relates to the functionality, you know, of the technology. And the BVAS technology performs two functions on election day. It accredits voters, and based on our data of Yaiga Africa, the BVAS did accredit voters. But when it came to the transmission of the results, um, in 68% of polling units, they took images of these results. But the big question was, how come these results didn't make it to the portal? The right. third critical issue that relates to election logistics is the fact that some voters found encountered difficulties with locating their polling units because INEC migrated po um, voters to new polling units just a few weeks before the election. So many issues there. And I mean, you know, you did point out, and I, I, I talked about this on my show yesterday, that the accreditation of voters, that that was one aspect that did actually work. But the transmission of the results, that, that was a whole other story altogether. When you think about what Nigerians are going through right now, our Larry Madoa did some beautiful reporting just yesterday, talking to ordinary Nigerian citizens about the issues, why, why this election is so important to them. And many of them said, look, nothing in Nigeria works. You know, some of the people that Larry spoke to were in tears, crying, saying nothing works in Nigeria. That means that the power situation is abysmal. You know, there's no reliable electricity in the country, as I'm sure you know. When you think about the healthcare system, it doesn't work. Public school education, that doesn't work. Water supply doesn't work. So many Nigerians feel a sense of hopelessness right now, even when you rely on the government for something like elections that allow you to actually change the situation in your country, that system doesn't work. And even if the parties that are contesting the election, even if they go to court, even if there are legal battles, there are many people who say, well, the judiciary system is so corrupt that we can't even trust that process at all. So for ordinary Nigerians who feel the sense of helplessness, of hopelessness, what are the options right now? I think the only option is, is to continue to participate in the process. And I say this, that this election has thrown up surprises. If you look at the outcome, we've seen political establishment dislodged um, in this election. We've okay. seen how, you know, incumbents have also lost, you know, um, the elections. Why? Because the people in those constituencies determined it was time to reclaim political leadership and reclaim the state. And I just want Nigerians to be optimistic, regardless of the challenges that we face, that the election to a large extent was largely peaceful mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. if there's an opportunity for a runoff election, they shouldn't, you know, um, refrain from showing up to vote because the only way to reclaim the state is by participating actively in elections. But the job of ensuring good governance that improves the quality of lives of Nigerians begins after elections. And, I, and there's no it's better time because to continue. I was going to say it's interesting because you talk about the importance of being optimistic and not losing hope. You know, in past elections, we have seen, especially among the youth, um, voter apathy. This time around, we saw the youth, young people really energized, you know, especially around Peter Obi, really energized, deciding that, look, there are so many issues in this country, especially when it comes to security, or I didn't even mention earlier the, the lack of jobs for young people, that sort of thing. And young people really felt, you know, if we come out in droves to register, maybe, maybe we can actually ensure that there is change for this country, for ourselves, and also for the next generation. Clearly, there's a lack of trust right mm. now. Do you not think that there will be after this voter apathy again? But also, I think more urgently, I mean, I'm worried about the possibility of violence, given the lack of trust, when the election results are fully announced. Well, anyone who thinks that the, the, the task of reclaiming the state will happen in just one round of elections will need to have a rethink. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of effort over a long period of time to reclaim the state from a political class that have held us hostage. It's not just by just participating in one elections. And we must know that it's it, election is a process and not an event. And so I would strongly encourage fellow Nigerians that yes, the election is still in progress. It has not been concluded. There's still a possibility of a runoff. And so we should continue 
to, 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 to work together, we should continue to engage the political process, um, understand the institutions and how to engage the institutions. Uh, and I say the fact that, you know, Zane, that a lot of young people showed up during voter registration insisting to collect their PVCs only yeah. says one thing, that Nigerians have not lost faith in democracy. Nigerians have not lost faith in Nigeria. And they believe that through the ballot, they can change, you know, this bad leadership. They can change, you know, and retire old and expired politicians from public office. Uh, and for me, um, regardless of the level of turnout, though poor in this election, really gives me hope. And we just need to sustain that mobilization. Political parties need to perform their role of mm -hmm. political socialization. And let's leave it to INEC and civil society organizations. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.